In this movie, the third in the section on rigging, we're going to look at two things together. One is rearranging the bones and the parts of the character back into a believable shape again. But the next thing is how we parent those together. You'll remember when we started out that we, we clicked the first bone right here in the hip. That's the best method. And then kind of progressed in a counterclockwise circle here as we added the bones. That means that there's some problems here and they're problems you're not going to see until you select the bone layer and then come over here to a special little tool the linking tool you can get to it with the keyboard shortcut P for the reparent when I click on that we see these arrows flying all over and it follows the same path that we used when we created our skeleton in the first place that means that the left leg the character's left leg is connected to the foot of the right leg not ideal when things start moving around. So this is how we go ahead and reassemble the character. I'll be using a combination of keyboard shortcuts. B for the bone selection tool, and that happens to be right up here. You can select it manually if you want to. And then P for reparent the bones back together. When I press B, the arrows will disappear, and it allows me to go ahead and select the next bone I want to work with. In this case, it'll be the top of the arm here for the character's right arm. I'll click on it, it turns red. Now I'll press the keyboard shortcut P for reparent, or you can come over here and click on the little linking bone. I'll go ahead and select P. And now I'm going to go ahead with, since this bone is highlighted, it's turned red. I'm going to come over here and connect it to the middle of the three bones we created in the torso. And you'll see this arrow realigns. Very fast, speedy process. So let's go ahead and do this to the rest. I obviously don't want the leg connecting to the hand. We'll connect that directly to the hip. So B to select the bone, and then P to reparent. Very fast. Let me go ahead and do that here. And we'll get all these lined up in no time so that we have something reasonable to work with. So now the head goes to the top of the neck, the arms come in about the middle. I didn't want the arms joining to this top bone, so it gives me a chance to move the head a little bit with some, some neck influence on the torso. And of course, this is all connected back down to the hip bone. Well, that's great. We've got everything in order. Time to explore a new tool, and that happens to be the bone offset tool. There is no keyboard shortcut for this one, so when you click it, things show up that uh, we've seen before, some of them at least. One is the bones influence area. Now this is a great time if you want to adjust the bone influence. You get a visual cue for it. Personally, I like to do it after the character has been assembled and then I can see how it's actually starting to bend a little bit and get a better idea of exactly how the influences need to be adjusted. So the first thing I'll do is just leave the offset tool selected and I'm going to reassemble the character now. The hip is the primary bone, the first one in the inverse kinematics chain that everything is connected to. So when I click on the lower bone here for the torso and pull it down, see what happens? The arms, which are connected to the torso, and the head, which is connected to the torso, also move along with it. And I'll get that lined up just about like this. I'll have to mention I'm working with a new file here. It's just kind of an iteration of what we've been working on rigging 0603 and I noticed before we got into this that I had the torso actually underneath the hips so this this fat stomach wasn't hanging over the belt like I wanted. Well now that we moved the torso the arms moved with it I can actually click on the top bone for the arm and drag that over to something that looks like a believable spot. This isn't a one-way trip you can adjust this you can fix these and tune it up later on as you see how your character moves. In this case I'll put that arm about there and we'll grab the head and just connect it to our character's body right here like this. Finally, we go to the legs. Bring those up underneath there. And move this about back to there. Pretty easy, isn't it? But now you're in for a shock. If you select any other tool besides the offset bone tool, it will look like your character explodes. I'll go ahead and do the select bone tool. Boom, the character explodes. You might think, holy cow, what happened? I thought I just fixed that. Whenever you go back to the offset tool, it will realign the character just like it needs to be. Or if you are not selecting the offset tool, we'll come back to the bone tool. If I advance the timeline and just move the little time marker over, the character automatically reassembles at frame one. 
Frame zero is where you always do all your rigging and get your character set up. And the program remembers that. So if you need to make adjustments to bone influences like we'll be doing in our next movie, then that's how you do it. It comes right back to frame zero. With that said, let's go ahead and move on to our next movie and adjust some of these influences and see how we can test that.